Good afternoon, team. Welcome aboard to our weekly market recap. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of Gar Capital. Glad to be with you this weekend and every weekend. It's when we do our videos, recapping the week, talking about what we did, what we missed, and what we're looking for for the next up upcoming week. Today is May 19th, 2024 on a Sunday, around 7.15 Eastern Standard Time. Features are open. Dow futures are up about 36 points. NASDAQ is green. Russell's green. s and is green as well. Uh, in terms of the commodities, uh, oil is down, gasoline is down, uh, gold is up, silver is up, and so is copper. So uh, we're going to get to it right here. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of these videos. Glad to be with you, as always, talking about the stock market. All right, rock and roll. Uh, here's the S&P 500. First thing I want to go and bring up is, you know, we're at all-time highs. We know this. The question is, are we overbought? What's next? What's the next move? Is this a double top or are we going to break out? So really, the most important thing here we have to ask is, what's the catalyst that's going to come up? And we can talk about that pretty much right now. Let's go and bring up our Discord. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll go and bring up earnings calendar. And here's the big one, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is the big, big deal, the big pony in the show. So we want to make sure that uh, obviously we have some positive price action because this is going to move the market. Obviously, now this could be flat. This could be sore, a sore job. We could tank either way. But we'll look at that chart here in a second. Here's what we got in terms of economic reports and Fed speakers. <clears throat> Fed Chair Powell did his did a commencement uh, remarks for a graduating party. I don't know what school it was, but that's already done. Didn't really affect the market. He really didn't talk about monetary policy. Obviously, it's a graduating ceremony. Uh, we got some Fed uh, governor speaking on Monday. Nothing new. Same on Tuesday. Existing home sales on Wednesday. We got FOMC meeting minutes at 2 p.m. Initial jobless claims. Uh, last one was 222,000. It was a little higher than expected, but made the stock market go higher. Uh, new home sales as well will be reported on Thursday. We got some PMIs and another Fed speaker. On Friday, durable goods orders uh, and another Fed speaker as well. Consumer sentiment uh, final reading will also be at 10 a.m. So rather quiet, I mean, in terms of economic news let's just say but nvidia knowing that's going to probably be the driver this week we would assume that you know we need nvidia to go higher now here's my point here now we're not quite at overbought yet but we're getting pretty close so i don't think we'll get to overbought conditions um to the point where we'll reject immediately you know we're new we're at new all-time highs obviously we know we're going to go higher but we're day traders we're options traders futures traders we want to know exactly what's going to happen so if we're looking here on the S&P 500 futures, I went ahead and put those fibs for you. <clears throat> 5,400 to right around 5,444, that's going to be our trend line resistance. As long as we kind of hold above our all-time highs once we break it, that'll be our support moving forward. But again, we are breaking out. So uh, the question remains, do you really want to buy SPY or Qs ahead of an NVIDIA event where it's a big part of it? That's kind of the risk. So I do expect the markets to go higher. No difference. I mean, nothing has changed here. I've said that the markets are going to go higher now for weeks. Um, so you know, we'll use the target as around 5450 uh, as our target for more upside. But not overbought as of yet. NASDAQ, again, all-time highs as well. 19338 would be the next target. That would be that trend line resistance. So you're talking about uh, another 600 points or so to the upside, maybe 700. Uh, for NASDAQ futures. So again, I think you still stay long here. We got a couple of good things happening on the daily. One is the 20 day moving average is about to break above the 50. That is a bullish cross. We want that. So let's take a look at the S&P. It's about to happen. So at least the short term momentum of the 20 days is getting above the 50 day. That's a really, really good sign. So again, I expect NASDAQ and uh, the S&P to move higher pretty much regardless of what NVIDIA does. Um, if NVIDIA obviously tanks and NASDAQ will be affected, but I think new all time highs will be in effect beforehand anyway. So, uh, that's what I think, but overbought, we're quite not there yet, but that's something to look forward to, um, or look at volatility index. Another one oversold that yellow line has been a time where we have bounced slightly or cr created a new rally. Uh, November created that new rally. August, we had or oh, the end of July. If you guys remember when the dollar bounced and we talked about that in the summer, and then we had a little bit of a move to the upside, May as well. So again, it's not perfect in terms of you know uh, doing technical analysis on the volatility index, but we're still not even at the lows yet. Uh, that's right around 1181. So I'd assume that we would tag those lows. Uh, and if we do, 
we'll see what we get there. But that's where I'm going to start, you know, kind of taking a look at possibly some insurance at that point. It gets just too cheap. Uh, maybe some VIX options, possibly. Who knows? Maybe we'll see if the dollar flips or anything like that. But uh, as of right now, I still think the VIX has a little bit more to go. Still a downside uh, tr uh, trend on the volatility index, which coincides with a upward trend into the S&P. It's no secret. What else do I have here on my notes for the evening? TNX, we're going to go to 10-year treasury yields, the macro side. Uh, CGI, I have to type that. Okay, so we did finally get this upward channel breakdown. That's a great sign. Right above the 100 day, where we actually bounced. So we're right here near this gap around 44.38. More than likely, we'll probably fill that. But again, we need to reject this downside trend line here. Um, I threw a couple of lines as well, as you could see what I'm expecting. Just to pull back down to around 38.13. It'll probably be the, the yields that we had back in February. Um, so again, you could see that trend line here pretty clean. We need to see if that rejects as well. So 10-year treasury yields, I still expect to be a little lower, but we do have a gap to feel, fill here at 44.41. Possibly we get that fill in the morning on Monday or Tuesday. Who knows? Stocks may pull back and retreat. Maybe that fills if NVIDIA misses. Who knows? Tons of, uh, tons of scenarios there, but I still expect a pullback as we did break down above that trend line here. Um, let's see here the dollar. The dollar, same, same deal, same scenario that I'm looking at. Again, that wedge breakdown. Uh, let's take a look at it a little bit more on the zoom here. Downward action. Uh, bounce a little bit off that trend line here. Uh, that hasn't changed, but again, I still expect this to continue to fall. So we're still slightly a smidge above the 200-day. We rejected the 50-day on the dollar. The 10-year treasury yields and the dollar are slightly above the 100. That will be the last straw for both those assets. So if those, or excuse me, those symbols, if they both break, that's where stocks continue to move higher and you can just have to stick with it. And then use your previous all-time high on the S&P. Um, I believe that would probably, what, 5,300 uh, SPX, for example, that will uh, be continued in the future as your support moving forward. So again, I think we're setting up for a summer rally. Dollar and yields are showing that. So none of this is really new. Uh, again, so stuff I've been talking about for a while. All right, let's go ahead and talk about how we've been doing so far in terms of the quarter. Here's the quarter. So again, we are mid-May. We're literally in the middle of Q2. We're at 84% win loss. That's 21 out of 25 trades hit. We had three losses in April uh, and one in May so far. So in my opinion, I think that's going to be the only loss that we'll have for May because all of our other expiries are for June anyways. So looking solid here. Other than the three that we lost in April, fair enough. But again, very, very solid. Uh, we just ended up with a 12 winning streak that ends with Bank of America. Um, last week, we had uh, GSK, Glasgow SmithKline, Apple uh, calls, Alibaba, and Starbucks to round up on Friday. So a really solid week. But again, talking about the quarter, this is excellent. I'm gunning for 90%. I think if we can get maybe five or six more trades by the end of the month, we may be able to get there. Maybe. Uh, so again, step at a time. Um, my goal this year really has been staying around the 80s, above 80% win loss, 85 being my main target, and we've been doing pretty solid with it. Uh, we go to premium signals as well. Uh, month to date, 86%. The only loss has been Bank of America. Apple, Delta Airlines, Glasgow, Smith, Klein, Apple, Alibaba, and Starbucks. Not exactly your usual Teslas and Microsofts and Googles. And again, to be a good trader, you're going to have to really expand out your reach. Not a lot of people wanted to trade, uh, you know, Freeport McMoran being copper with copper hitting all time highs. But opportunities present themselves. And, uh, you know, it's not going to just be tech stocks. It's not going to be just GME and AMC, for example. There's other stocks out there. And this week, uh, four to five, again, like I said, GSK, Glasgow, Smith, Klein. Uh, the entry in terms of the entry level, I waited for everybody to get out. Um, I think some of them got filled like 65, 70, 75. So I made sure to wait for my guys to get their, their exits. Uh, Apple had 40%, high as 55% in the money. Alibaba, we talked about China stocks breaking out, got as high as 90% in the money. And Starbucks, a dip buy, uh, got as high as 36% on those 80 calls. So really, really well done. Um, again, just great, solid all around. If you guys are part of the service, you know the drill. Uh, there is no more basic. It's just premium signals. We give you the updates as we go along with the exits. 
and the breakdowns here on our watches and channels. I mean, how great has it been? And uh, also, I want to send this out here. Big shout out to everybody on the server. I asked for a sentiment check, approval of our approval rating of our services. 100% like the service or approve the service. I mean, how amazing. Uh, thank you for all who voted. I do it for you guys. We do it for you guys. And uh, I mean, what more can I say? I just want to keep earning your business and earning your trust and keep doing this moving forward. So we'd love to have you. And the first step is to join the live market blog. Here you go. And uh, if you are interested, the scrolling uh, information is at the bottom. Go to our website, www.guard.capital. Sign up for our free plan under pricing. Again, if you just want to check us out, a lot of people always ask us, uh, do we have free trials? We have the free live market blog. That's free forever. But again, if you ever want to get into our paid services, make sure to check out our website, www.gar.capital. Now let's get to the meat of it, what everyone wants to talk about, which is our watch list or the stocks I'm watching for the week. So let's take a look with first being, uh, let me see if I can get this fixed here. We can do Coinbase first, Coinbase. And we're going to take away our study of RSI. We don't need that anymore. All right, take a look at Coinbase. Ooh, are we setting up for a possible breakdown or breakout? Really depends. Get above 222, we're going for a breakout. That's where I think we're going to go. Break below 190, this is a short. And it's a great short, in my opinion. There's a lot of gaps to fill below. So uh, either way, I think this is a great setup. Coin is a little expensive on the option side, but be very careful. But BITO being another one that you can use, above 28.75, that's the 50-day. And that's what we're looking for. And we'll target all the way to all-time highs, guys. Bitcoin will get back above 72,000 by the end of the year. That's pretty much set. Why? Because of the dollar. The dollar will fall as we expected. So BITL being another setup above 28.75, that is your 50-day. But again, it is a breakdown, breakout here of this downward channel or flag, whatever you want to call it. Higher is what we expect on Bitcoin. Let's go and take a look at ExxonMobil. Yes, the freebie. The 125 calls, the ones that made us go through all of this hell, is finally breaking out. So let me go ahead and activate this drawing, and I'm going to move this away. Uh, let's just do that. There you go. Move this drawing. Okay, so you can see the downward flag and the breakout. And we're going to get to right here, 123.75. <clears throat> I don't know if we'll get there this week, but in terms of the stock, above 120.74, I already signaled it. So... I don't want to signal it again, but I do expect us to get XOM. But there's one more stock that is an XOM. Well, the biggest part of it is XOM. And that is XLE, a beautiful breakout and retest hold and bouncing back. Guys, we're going to target anything up to 98 as long as we can get above 95.15 on XLE. Again, I really, really believe that I was just a smidge early on energy. But energy is going to go. I love XLE. I love Chevron. I love XOM. I have them. But XLE above 95.16. I think that's a long. Absolutely. So again, the watch list or the stocks I'm watching, coin slash BITO. I can get both. Uh, we also have XOM and XLE. So again, some of you guys may have the XOM freebie. I'm still holding that. And then we have good old NVIDIA. Yes, NVIDIA reports this week. So what do I expect out of it? I don't know what their earnings are going to be. I don't think anyone does other than they do. So again, you know, any kind of prediction is a tough one. Would I trade options here on NVIDIA? No, because it's going to be expensive, very expensive. What you can do is trade QQQ or TQs against it. So TQs would probably be another one. Um, you know, you're trying to see, okay, what's the next kind of level I could target? 6750. TQQs is a breakout. So again, I think if you want to trade NVIDIA earnings, take a look at TQQ. It'll be a little cheaper. And you can see if there's a lot of volume uh, for an extra uh, extra time in terms of expiry. NVIDIA is just going to be way too expensive. Yes, I do expect NVIDIA to break out and go higher, really regardless of earnings. And I do think they beat. So yeah, they'll break 960. We'll get to 1000. I don't know by end of the week, but uh, I'm relatively close we're going to get to nvidia um should you buy the 1000s because they're just going to be expensive i think tqq is a better play i'd rather not play uh earnings on this one but uh i do expect nvidia to move higher you got the 20 day crossing over the 50 we are setting up for higher uh so that's what i expect again this could completely pull back right down here to 815 i don't think so i think you're right nvidia higher and that's what i see 
So expecting another fun week in the bull market. Oh, in this market, bull market. And uh, I'm excited what the future holds. I hope you guys join us uh, for tomorrow's morning note. And I will see you guys then. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Appreciate you guys uh, listening and following. I'll see you then. Cheers all.